I've been tossing around this idea for a handful of days now, uh, thinking about Bionicle Generation 2, you know, the aspects of it that I do like, the aspects that I don't really care for. And I find the entire series kind of fascinating because it is a series that I think starts off on a really high note. But in my subjective opinion, I think it kind of goes downhill from the start, which is a feat. Definitely. Uh, but it's obviously not what you really want. And again, being my own subjective opinion, I'm sure that there are many people who disagree with me who like other aspects of Bionicle Generation 2, whatever the case may be. Hopefully I started this video by saying Generation 2. That said, though, one of the things that I think Generation 1 Bionicle did better, or at least did in a way that I prefer, is the sort of step up from sets that came before, which I know sounds kind of vague. But when we take a look at a set like Gallimata and Gallinuva from 2001 and 2002 Bionicle respectively, you can see a very identifiable difference between the two sets. I know that there are people who can see, you know, Gallinuva and think, oh, the mask doesn't look quite right for the character, or whatever the case may be, right? But at the end of the day, you can still tell that these two are supposed to be the same characters. And rightfully so, at that point in time, we hadn't really been introduced to any other Toa, so it made sense, right? However, when you then look at Generation 2 Bionicle and you look at a set like Galley Master and Galley Uniter, it's harder to say the same thing. It's not to say that visually they aren't different, because of course they are. But actually, let's take a look, because here are the iterations of Galley that I brought up for this video. Obviously, you know, Galley 2008 is not here, but that's not really the point of this, right? But what is here, what you do see, I think shows a pretty stark difference between the sets that we got. When you look at a set like Galley up in the upper uh, corner there and then Galley Nuva, when you look at a set like Galley, yeah, Galley Mata, the original, right? And Galley Nuva, you can see that the secondary character is bulky. It has the armor on it. Obviously, the limbs have changed a new piece for that wave. And of course, the weapons themselves, which not only change, but have dual function and still feel like they fit the character. All of this said, you know, I do think that Galley Master and Galley Unite are still both fare pretty well in the form of weapons. Galley Uniter doesn't have my favorite weapon by any means, having the sort of like staff spear thing, but it's not the worst thing in the world. However, when I look at those two sets, I see the characters, I see the same color schemes, I see armor in similar placement, I see the same, uh, you know, uh, I, I want to say layout even of like silver or metallic colors. Now, obviously, Galley Master has gunmetal on her as well. Galley Uniter doesn't really have gunmetal with the exception of the hip piece because it was just made in that one color. Um, and so there are differences. Obviously, orange is traded out for yellow. Whether or not you like that, that's up to you. I do like it to a degree, but I also, I'll get to that in a separate video. Point being, though, right? Visual distinction. I think it's very important. I should also note that I actually edited edited the picture above slightly because for some reason, Galley Master, the yellow on her was kind of muted. So I had to kind of up that. And also, Galley Uniter doesn't have glowing eyes, like, at all in any of her pictures. And if you guys have that mask, you kind of know why. <laughs> Unfortunately, the mask has these really sunken in eyes that don't quite align with the eyes on the actual head itself. It's a lovely mask. It's probably my favorite Uniter mask in terms of design overall. But it's very clear, very evident to me that Leo wasn't really that Consider it, I want to say, of the eyes themselves. For one thing, the eyepiece only came out in one color in that first wave, later coming out in orange. Uh, but also, just having the trans light blue eyes behind this head with such sunken in eye holes made it very hard to see her eyes glow in the first place. So, you know, does that justify not having it in the in the photo art? I don't know. I'm getting ahead of myself. Point being that I think that all of the iterations of Galley that are shown he here look good. It's just that there's a visual distinction between the first two waves and less visual distinction between the second two. Whether or not that's a bad thing, I think that's absolutely up to you. I do find it fascinating, though, that in Generation 1, Gali Nuva introduces, along with the other Nuva characters, a dual use for the weapons, which I think was a very smart idea on LEGO's part. It gave them a very different feel 
to their Toa Mata counterparts. It helped to justify the changeover in weapons on some of the characters as well, and it helped to make those weapons feel like they really should exist in this world, right? And I find it fascinating that in G2, the opposite's kind of true. The Master sets get dual uses for their weapons, but then the Uniters don't. And I think in part that is because the Uniters are intended to, you know, connect to their Rahi on the back, whatever, uh, creature on the back, right? And so that was sort of the gimmick that, I don't know, displaced this feature. I, 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 can't, I can't exactly tell you why this is the case. Obviously, part of it is, you know, there's only one weapon mold for the Uniter series. That bothers me to no end. Uh, I imagine LEGO did it to save money, you know. But the other thing that I think bothers me too about Uniters is sort of the era that came out in. At this point in time, there were still some Hero Factory sets on shelves from years prior. There were also some Star Wars construction sets uh, and even some Chima Ultra builds, depending on where you were at and, again, the time of year, right? And so they had a lot more competition on the shelves just with like Lego sets themselves, right? And I do think that they tried to do a lot to distinguish these sets from those other sets. In part, these, especially the Uniter sets, being a more involved build than many of the sets that came out prior, but also uh, the color schemes, right? With the Uniters, with the Masters, we were introduced to three new, I'm going to use air quotes when I say that, uh, colors to CCBS. Now, technically, bright green wasn't new. It was used on a Joker set previously, uh, but we hadn't seen up until this point dark azure, as far as I'm aware, used in CCBS, and we hadn't seen dark orange used in CCBS either, which I find fascinating. But, however, one of the things that kind of bothers me is the lack of I want to. I don't know if consistency is really the right word. Continuity might be a better one. From master sets to uniter sets. I'm going to go ahead and back off of this one here now. But obviously, we know that some of the sets went from having like silver accents to gold accents to this accent to that accent, whatever, or changing over like key orange on Liwa Master to the, in my opinion, inferior yellow because the key orange has a subtle warmth to it that just pairs so lovely against the. Uh, bright green color that yellow just doesn't quite match up with in my opinion and also it gave some difference between Liwa and Gali since Gali used traditional yellow which I think pairs better with dark azure baffling I know anyway I've went out of my way in the past and this is why I said there will be a separate video on this to make my own revamp of Gali Master and I'll showcase that in the future there's probably an old video on the channel showing it as well but it helped to give me a lot of love for the figure uh once i've kind of realized that you don't have to change much in my opinion with galley master as a set to really make the set shine the the fact that the set has silver and gunmetal feels a little bit indecisive and personally i would have loved to have seen solely gunmetal on the set using the silver on other characters because gunmetal goes really nicely with yellow as we know as lego knows hero factory did this quite a bunch um and obviously the uh, the yellow goes well with dark azure right orange goes great with dark azure too but it it feels it's hard for me to say because i loved the orange when it was first introduced with galley uniter uh on her it was a good change of pace for the character and there was more of it right but i actually i think over time have actually started leaning back to yellow preferring yellow with galley which i didn't expect i really loved the orange when i first saw it point being it's baffling to me in a lot of ways how good i think lego did with the master designs they're not perfect but neither are the toa mata i want to make that very clear right but they are what they need to be to stand out in my opinion and the uniters just don't stand out in the same way there's less that differentiates them because even though the platforms are all built up differently, uh, and I really admire what LEGO was trying to do with like the body builds to make each of them different, at the end of the day, when you have all six Uniter sets sitting next to each other, even though the build for them is distinctively very different, the overall end result looks very similar.
right? So you don't end up getting this diversity that the master sets had, that the Toa Mata and Toa Nuva had, which I think is unfortunate. Uh, it goes a long way to help make those sets feel a lot less like clones, even though they are, at the end of the day, clone sets, right? Um, but the Masters understood this, it felt like. Uh, the Masters did not do everything perfect. G2 did not do everything perfect. There were a lot of things that I think could have been done better with just a little bit more thought, a little bit more time to, to cook, if you will. Uh, and I am glad that we got what we got. I do think that we're better off for it. Like, I was better off for it. But I also think in a lot of ways, it's it hasn't aged in a way that has helped the Bionicle franchise in Lego's eyes. Do you know what I mean? Like, I expect that Lego figured this brand was going to do hard numbers for them, right? And so understanding that the latter half of G2 just was not selling well for them, I do remember, even though I had bought every G2 set up until the Uniters, walking into a Toys R Us when the, the Beasts were out and none of the Beasts looking ap appealing to me. You know, not buying any of them, uh, which is shocked or I'm shocked by because I really was into the master sets and I bought the Uniters. And even when I built them, I was like, this feels like a downgrade. But again, that's my own opinion. You might disagree. Um, at the end of the day, I think that there is a lot to love. I think there's a lot to learn from Bionicle Generation 2. There is one thing that I would experiment with. I don't know if it would fix any of the problems with the series, of course, uh, or help the sets sell at all. Um, but one of the strengths of Bionicle Generation 1 was how much of a platform build it was, right? The Toa Mata looked complete even without having armor slapped directly over top of their torso. And that's hard to say for other waves for other sets from the series because the Toa Metru look fine with their chest as is but then you see sets like Nidiki and you see set not Nidiki um Iruni whatever I don't even probably pronounce that correctly anyway and you see that they add stuff onto it it just feels appropriate for those sets and you see obviously the Anika and I don't imagine anybody be building the Anika without any armor at all on the body like it's designed to wear armor and so as we go further along, it feels like there's more ne uh, necessary pieces to make your Bionicles filled out more complete. Not a bad thing, by the way. But I feel like there is a lot you can get from kind of taking some steps back and maybe designing pieces that hold up on their own, even if they are designed to later on incorporate another piece of armor over top of them, right? And so my whole thesis, the whole thing that led to this video, was thinking about how the Toa Mata and Toa Nuva evolution did so well, what the Toa Master and Toa Uniter didn't, if that makes sense. And what I would have liked to have seen, maybe, I don't know that this would have worked or been even a good idea, but the Master sets don't uh, they don't give us any new shell type at all. They give us a new armor add-on, of course, but the shells that appear in the set, even the torso shell and everything, are all shells from previous existing uh, waves of Hero Factory, of CCBS, etc. And I think it would have actually been really fascinating to have gotten a new torso shell designed to kind of stand alone, but still be able to attach other things to it. Um, I do think, for what it's worth, pulling up this one one more time, um, pulling up this one, that the armor used on Galley here specifically, which is the Brain Attack chest piece, uh, is a really good armor uh, for this concept, right? It looks really exceptional by itself, even without uh, a torso chest cover add-on. Um, but then later on giving us something to go over the top of it that helps to beef it up, helps make it feel filled out, and helps to distinguish the character from what would come later. Obviously, I think LEGO kind of thought this too, but their answer was a single unified kind of ugly armor piece for the Uniter sets, in my opinion, ugly. Um, and yeah, obviously, I don't think that it worked out for the best there, but that's just my opinion. Anyway, uh, this video is going on far too long, so if you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe. It helps the channel out tremendously more than you know and um yeah i appreciate it you can check out links for discord instagram and patreon all the which are down in the description and i will see you all in the next one take care